Yo, it's Bogue. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. And a ton of new planets just dropped in one of the biggest interstellar planet packs for KSB, Kerbal Star Systems 2, that adds over 70 new objects to the game. I've been covering this mod a lot on my channel, and I legit cannot explore these planets quicker than they come out. So if you're into vicariously exploring the universe through KSP, let's go check it out. Okay, so starting out here in the tracking station near Kerbin, we can zoom out till the Kerbal home system is just another dot, and we see a bunch of new stars surrounding it in interstellar space. We'll start with the new systems added in this update. First, we have Orbal, an orange giant that has evolved past its main sequence to puff up into a much bigger star, roughly analogous to Pollux, a nearby orange giant in real life. Its closest planet is Vale, a gas giant wandering too close to its older star. It's getting hotter and stirring up the atmosphere, close to becoming a hot giant. Jupiter. Pollux has a known gas giant in real life called Thestius, so that's super cool to imagine this might be what this world is like in the real universe. Next is He2, wrapped in a thick cloud of chlorine gas. This rocky world is one of the most toxic and corrosive planets ever discovered. The air here would instantly react with the water in your body and turn it into hydrochloric acid, making it one of the most extreme places to explore in the KSP universe. Those are the two planets around Orbal right now. Next, the Sirion system finally got its first planet. The Sirion system is inspired by the real-world Sirius star, which is a white-hot binary system and one of the brightest in the sky. It's 8.6 Kerbal light-years away and part of a binary pair, alongside a white dwarf called Sirion B. The lone planet in the system right now is Hydron, a huge ocean world about one and a half times Kerbin's gravity. It was once an ice giant like Uranus or Neptune, but was half vaporized by Sirion B's red giant phase, which left behind a global ocean planet with a unique weather pattern and exotic pressure ice at the bottom of its ocean. This is kind of like that one water planet from Interstellar, minus the black hole of course. Next let's check out the brown dwarf in Kerbal Star Systems 2, Corman, which is like a failed star. Located 6.52 Kerbal light years away from Kerbin, it glows in a deep low wavelength light like a smoldering coal left over from a stellar campfire. It has a faint toroidal belt of carbon dust orbiting around it and several dark planets, the first of which is CERN, a volcanic carbon planet with huge eruptions of carbide dust into orbit which feeds this magnetic field of the brown dwarf. Next is Tide, a warm planet covered in dark, tar-like lakes of hydrocarbons. Much of the makeup of brown dwarf systems is carbon in real life. Rasbach is a small gas dwarf object, which is a particularly dark planet. Deep below the clouds, it's theorized that the gas is squished so hard it becomes a supercritical slush of misbehaving elements. Morv is a jagged world of glassed over carbon planes, graphene ridges, and diamond gravel like a broken mirror. I wonder how much diamond rings from Morv would go for back on Kerbin. Zolem is the spookiest planet ever discovered, or at least this far, so much that Kerbinauts cast straws to be sent almost anywhere else. It slinks in the outskirts of Corbin's dim light and hides an expanse of black mushroom forests on its surface. Murky currents of spores drift through the air, and if such biologics could twist this world into a living black fungus, what could it do to you if a spore or two stowawayed in your ship? Zolem has a moon called Ver, a monument-like asteroid in a perfect geosynchronous orbit above the planet. Its orientation is such a strange occurrence, maybe it was placed there by an unknown force. Next, we go to the biggest system in KSS2, the Nova Kerbani Triple Star System. Located about 4.37 Kerbal light years away, made up of two Kerbal-like stars orbiting in the center with an outlying red dwarf system. Nova Kerbani A is the biggest of the three and the most Kerbal-like star in the KSS-2 star cluster. Its closest planet is Karev, a red-stained rocky world similar to Moho, but bigger and redder. Next is Ilf, a monster planet with gravity so strong that even the bravest probes come back shorter. The surface is a pressure cooker sautéed in sulfur, and it's a super Venus if I ever saw one. It has a lone moon called Ion, which is a lot like the Mun, except for a volcanic fracture in its surface, meaning this moon probably isn't quite done forming. The commanding planet of the Nova Kabani system is Novin, a huge gas giant with a striking ring system on an elongated orbit. It carries an interesting pack of moons with it just beyond the rings. Isle is a small moon being stretched by tidal forces, causing cracking and jets of subsurface water ice into orbit around Novin, replenishing its rings over time. 
Pelren is a striking ice world in a fragile balance between its tenuous atmosphere and shallow lakes of water, just barely able to persist on the surface. It mostly remains a frozen frontier, but also a land of opportunity for the most bundled up Kerbal colonists. If you install the Pandora expansion that comes with KSS2, the Novan system will be turned into the Polynovan system, a recreation of the Polyphema system from the Avatar movies. Pandor, a replica of Pandora, is revealed in this revamp with planet-wide auroras, massive alien forests, and even floating mountains straight out of the movies. I highly recommend you check this one out because it's pretty awesome. This expansion will also add the new moon Sulf around Polynovan, which is a world covered in acid ponds, which sounds really cool. Frosk is a vast, dirty snowball moon around Novan, with brilliant streaks of minerals and ice marbling its surface. This is one of the prettiest terrestrial moons I've seen, and I'm sure Novan looks awesome from its surface. Even further out is Krav, a small captured asteroid on an inclined orbit. This could be a really good mining and refueling spot with its low gravity and distance from the gravity well of Novin. The outermost moon is Nur, another icy world dominated by a giant equatorial canyon that wraps around the entire world. I wonder if Kerbals will eventually hold a race to see who can circumnavigate the moon first in an SRB propelled rocket sled. Next in the far out asteroids of Nova Kerbani A is Mur, the largest object in the belt. Beyond this is Gore, an iconic dwarf planet with such a rapid spin that it has stretched out into a disc world, a peculiar frontier and fan favorite in schools for young Kerbals when it was discovered. Outside this system, on the other side of the center of mass, is Nova Kerbani B, a K-type star slightly dimmer than Kerbal with its own disc of planets orbiting around it. Kaith is almost completely lava, with its tidally locked day side a hemispheral molten ocean. This planet is either completely boiling or about to explode from under you on its night side. You might want to bring some extremely advanced cooling suits as well to survive a trip to the surface, but you'd probably still die. Next is Skeld, a barren rocky world rich in mineral deposits. Alva is the Arrakis of KSS2, a global desert world with a unique equatorial weather channel. This planet may have once had waves where there are now dunes and sandstorms. Some traces of habitability may exist in rare spots on its surface. Next is Blalo, a beautiful planet clinging to life out of sheer stubbornness. The skies are polluted with iron dust particles, but the air is still breathable with a mild climate. This is a much older second Kerbin with mineral rich green oceans spanning between continents of dry plateau. Toes. The fan base had a huge debate over whether the iron dust content of the water should make the water like an oxidized green or a rusty red color. So there is also included a red Blalo expansion you can include to turn its oceans red. Blalo has three asteroidian moons called Ito, Rav, and Nud. Beyond Blalo is an emerald green comet called AC1, a prominent target for researchers of interstellar exocomets and sightseers of the coolest views the universe has to offer. Elno is a massive frozen rock on the furthest ends of Nova Kerbani B. It lies beneath a relentlessly cold sky and has the largest moons in the system called Glim and Cern. Floating way far out in the void, beyond the sole control of either star, orbits Abyss, an almost rogue-like circumbinary planet covered in Tholan ice. Basically space ice so cold it turns red, and it has a ghost-like ring around it. It's definitely the loneliest exoplanet ever confirmed in the Kerbal universe. Orbiting just over a third of a Kerbal light year outside the center of the triple star system is the red dwarf Proximus Kerbani. Sometimes considered to be the runt of the triple star, it's home to an exotic array of exoplanets, analogous to the closest individual star system to Earth in real life. First is called another inner volcano world cracked with lava calderas and volatile tectonics. Tirman is a tidally locked terrestrial world with a few foggy basins of briny lakes left at its twilight zones. Beyond is Brumel, a frozen water world with active glaciers filtered red under the light of Proximus Kerbani. There are hints of a pitch black underground water ocean as well. Fumar is a twin to Brumel with a very similar but even colder surface. Rime is a mysterious planet sitting between the category of Super Earth and Mini Neptune, with a hazy atmosphere covering a shimmering slush ocean below. Its cloud patterns are particularly cool looking to me. 
It has an asteroidian moon called Buck. Setha is an equatorially ridged dwarf planet covered in craters and less than spherical terrain. Gloam is a glowing green ice giant and the largest planet in the system. It has an unusually grand ring system made from the remnants of a smashed moon long ago. Its first moon is Ernil, another scratched up ice world with a likely subterranean ocean. Isel is the larger outer moon of Gloam, pocketed by shallow fissures. It likely has been geologically dead for eons. Trailing behind Gloam is Eagle, a dwarf planet being pulled along the L5 Lagrange point from Gloam's gravitational influence. It has a cryovolcanic surface with a minor ring system. Next, we'll take another look at the black hole system added in the last update. Kerr is a supermassive black hole about 39.8 Kerbal light years away from Kerbal and is inspired by the black hole at the center of our own galaxy, Sagittarius A. Its accretion disk glows white hot as its light blue shifts in orbit around the black hole. In fact, the planets and objects orbiting the black hole are all traveling at significant fractions of the speed of light. You're going to need some relativistic technology to catch up with them, and the time dilation will age Kerbal civilization to dust before you're even able to reach them. Its only planet is Grav, a concentric archipelago ocean world with rings of clouds and terrain on its day side facing the black hole, no doubt completely under its gravitational dominance. A wormhole network also connects this system with many of the other systems in the mod for easier instantaneous travel through interstellar space. Closer to the accretion disk is an unknown object of cosmic horror, referred to as the Hub. Although no one knows anything about it other than it doesn't look exactly like a normal planet, uh, it's entirely artificial and potentially even hollow. We don't know who or what made it, why or how. Maybe a daring mission to the surface could change that. Next is a primordial object potentially from the pre-existence of the universe itself. It has confounded all observation and is theorized to be a source of the field that generates reality itself. If you can reach this mysterious entity, you might uncover the secrets of the universe and the biggest mystery of all. Why is there something rather than nothing in this vast universe? Pretty crazy stuff for Kerbal Space Program. Lastly, we have the OG system from KSS2, Aethera which I recently explored with an interstellar expedition series on my channel. So make sure to check that out if that sounds cool to you. It's a red dwarf system only about 2.56 Kerbal light years away from Kerbal and the closest star system in KSS2. I'll go through the planets quick because I've covered them a couple times before, so consider this a rapid fire round. Surther, another cratered lava world. Vespin, a super intense super Venusian planet with hot lightning storms. Cretel, an exposed core of a dead gas giant with craters of giant fields of green crystals. Tesher, the closest habitable-ish world to Kerbin, with a thin atmosphere and frequent dust storms and saltwater lakes. Glacian, a giant ice world outside of Aethera's habitable zone covered in large mountain ranges and red-tinged snowstorms. It's two asteroid moons, Uno and Burr. Aten and Foibe, the two exocomets circling Aethera that can be seen in the skies across the system. The Mork Thur, binary dwarf planet. The ringed supercurban Iores and its disk moon Python. Geyser moon Orith and its big brother Cryos. And that's the entirety of the worlds to explore in this new update of Kerbal Star Systems 2, adding over 70 new objects to the game. Make sure you check out the links in the description below to try this mod for yourselves, and stay up to date with future updates for these star systems. Consider dropping a like, comment, and subscribing if you enjoyed this video and want to see more adventures like this in Kerbal Space Program. I'll see you guys next time.